In this video, I want to show how to find expected value using RStudio. Let's start with discrete variables. So for discrete variables, we need to start with two vectors. The first is just going to be the list of values. So here I created my vector x consisting of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the possible outcomes in my probability experiment. The second vector is going to be the probability vector, so we're going to put the corresponding probabilities in a vector. So here I have my probability vector. So the probability of 1 is 0 0.1, 2 is 0 0.2, 3 is 0 0.3, 4 is 0 0.2, probability of 5 is 0.15, and probability of 6 is 0 0.05. To find the expected value of a discrete distribution, we would multiply the values by their corresponding probabilities and add them up. So we want to use the sum command. We're going to add up all of the x times p's. So sum of x times p. And if we run this, we can see our mean down here at the bottom of 3.25. So this is how we would find the expected value of a discrete distribution using RStudio. Next, I want to look at finding the expected value of a continuous distribution. And for this, we actually need to set up a function. I'm going to start with a very simple function, which is just 2 times x. So f of x is equal to 2x. For expected value, we need to know our integrate function. For this, we're going to use integrate. We insert our function, which we called f, and then our bounds for integration. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And when we run this, we get 1. So the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x is 1. However, this is not the actual expected value. The expected value, we needed to integrate x f of x. And in order to do that properly, we actually need to create a separate function. So we created a separate function called g, which is our original function times x, since that's what we need to integrate. f of x times x. And then we can integrate that from 0 to 1. When we do, we can see that we get 0.666667, or 2 thirds. So the actual expected value of this is 2 thirds, which does correspond to what we did in the previous video whenever we found the expected value of this particular function. Let's look at one more. Here I have the function 0.1 times e to the negative 0.1x. And we use this exp for exponential. This indicates we're going to raise e to a power. And then in parentheses, we actually put the exponent for our e. So this is 0.1 times e to the negative 0.1x. And I want to find the expected value of this function. I'm going to go ahead and insert an x times into this function, since for expected value, I do need to multiply my original function, which is here times my value x, and then we can integrate this. For this particular random variable, this function works for x greater than 0 and is 0 otherwise. So instead of an upper bound, we go up to infinity. So we use this inf with a capital I to represent infinity. You can also do minus inf for negative infinity. And when we run, we can see that our expected value is 10, which is exactly what it corresponded to whenever we did this by hand in the previous video.